Tiffany Muller is the president of End Citizens United, and she is here to discuss a lot more with us. Tiffany, good to see you as always. So let's talk about some of the measures that we're seeing, especially in Texas. Just how restrictive are these new rules and who's most likely going to be affected with them? Well, first, Baker, thanks so much for having me back on. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. And look, what Texas is doing is what we're seeing across the country, which is erecting barriers to the ballot box that's going to disproportionately harm communities of color and make it harder for them to vote. We know that the 2020 elections where voters overcame a pandemic and a lot of barriers being put in the ballot box was the most free, fair and secure election that we've ever had. So these bills need to be taken into the context of what they are, which is an effort to actually restrict access to the ballot box, uh, which is absolutely anti-democratic and has to be stopped. So in Texas, they're making it harder to vote by mail, which was already one of the hardest uh, states to vote. They're making it harder for uh, people to actually help people vote. They're, uh, they're just criminalizing behaviors left and right and making it harder and scarier to participate in our democracy, um, which is why we're pushing so hard for the For the People Act on the federal level to actually overrule these uh, state suppressive laws. Yeah, so let's talk about that because that was the case when you and I talked last about Georgia and we saw a lot of businesses, Major League Baseball, some production companies pulling out of the state as a result of that. We're seeing some businesses coming out and criticizing the Texas law, but is the, is the implication here we're going to see a lawsuit from ACLU, uh, Mark Elias, all these other sorts of, of, of Democratic strategists out there file a lawsuit in regards to Texas and Florida also? Absolutely. I mean, nine minutes after Governor DeSantis uh, signed the bill into law, Mark Elias filed a lawsuit. Uh, filed a lawsuit to actually overturn those restrictions, and we're so glad to be able to work with Mark Elias in fighting for voting rights and fighting to secure access to the ballot. But we can't rely on the courts to do this. We have to pass federal legislation to make sure that everyone has an equal opportunity to access the ballot box. Uh, so the For the People Act would actually make it easier, not harder to vote by making sure everyone had access to vote by mail, to early voting, uh, that it'd be easier to register to vote. It would also get big money out of politics. And that's part of the thing too, Baker, is what we're seeing here is dark money spending tens of millions of dollars to push these efforts across the country in a coordinated uh, way, which is why we've seen laws signed in in Georgia, Iowa, Montana, Kansas. Uh, we're seeing it across the country. Florida, we're going to see Texas, Arizona is pushing bills now. These aren't one-offs. This is a coordinated strategy to keep people from being able to vote. Uh, and on top of all of that, uh, you know, we saw the House pass H.R. 1, which would be the For the People Act, which would basically supersede all of these laws in these states. We know it's obviously going to hit a little bit of a bump in the Senate, given the fact that Democrats would have to nuke the filibuster to get this done. How do you sort of see H.R. 1 playing out in Congress? Are you optimistic at all that this can potentially get passed? I am optimistic. I really am, Baker. And let me tell you why. I'm optimistic because we know that we have the American people with us. We know that 80% of Americans want to see this bill passed, including over 70% of Republicans. Uh, we've seen it pass the House already. Tomorrow, it has a markup in the Senate Rules Committee, which is the final step it needs before it can go to the Senate floor. And we're making sure and working with our membership across the country to make sure that every single senator, de Democrat or Republican, knows that this is must-pass legislation. Uh, this is critical and urgent, and we absolutely must get this done, whether that's with 10 Senate Republicans joining with Democrats to pass it or changing the rules in order to make sure that we're protecting our democracy, because nothing could be more foundational and more important than that. Who is impacted, in your mind, the most by these new voter suppression laws? Are these people of color? Are these the elderly voters who most likely were going to be doing the, mail, the vote for mail anyway? Who's most impacted by this? Well, what we've seen across the country is a real coordinated effort to put restrictions in place that will disproportionately hurt communities of color, African-American voters, Hispanic voters, also young voters and college voters. We're seeing a, a coordinated attack to make sure that they're, they are suppressing and making it harder 
for young voters to vote who turned out at record numbers in the 2020 election. So that, uh, we know that. We also know that uh, the Native American population and communities uh, are gonna have a harder time accessing the ballot. Um, basically, they're trying to erect as many barriers as possible. Uh, and they're doing it so that they can try to hold on to power uh, and try to win back the Senate and the House. And that's not how our elections are supposed to work. It's not that if you don't like the outcome, you get to just change the rules for the next election cycle, uh, which is why we have to pass the For the People Act and make sure that everyone is that everyone across the country has an equal opportunity to access the ballot box. Yeah, so let's just say hypothetically, not, these laws get passed, nothing happens, and these laws are on the books for the 2022 elections. You mentioned how you know important these states are. Arizona has an important Senate race. In Georgia, you have the governor's race and a very important Senate race there. You have in Texas, the governor's race, Greg Abbott running for re-election there. So just how detrimental would these would these voter suppression efforts be if they stay on the books in 2022? Well, we're very concerned about them, Baker. And it, we're concerned about both these laws and not being able to override them and the fact that it could keep hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of voters from being able to cast a ballot. Uh, additionally, we've heard Republicans say that they're gonna use gerrymandering. This is a redistricting year, apportionment data just came out uh, last week, and we're hearing Republicans say that they're going to gerrymander their way back to the House majority. We're hearing them talk about spending up to $40 million in dark money uh, from outside special interest groups to push through more barriers to the ballot box. So we're worried about all of the attacks we're seeing on our democracy, from uh, be, not being able to access uh, voting, to the gerrymandering, to the money that's been flooding in. And what we're trying to do is give power back to the people, because that's the only way we can truly have a responsive and representative government. And if we don't act and don't act now, uh, we are very concerned about the impact on the 2022 election. All right, Tiffany Muller is the president of N Citizens United. Tiffany, always a pleasure to have you here. Thanks so much for getting up early with us this morning.